Got a 2007 stretched out Peter built a new 3406 The cat likes a pull Flying down the interstate 13 on the stick I got a stack of paper logs Like we used to use yesterday When we still drove our trucks with pride But now they cut back My horse has got an e-log on the dash Now I'm always running behind With Mike Griffin Great Griffith? Griffith? Griffin. Griffin. Okay. <laughs> and this one might be a lot of interest to you guys that are in the lease purchase side. Um, so we're just going to let him introduce himself and tell us or tell you guys what it is that he does here. Hey, Mike. So my name is Mike Griffin. I'm operations manager here at Celadon. Um, work primarily with the contractor fleets. Um, basically in charge of the driver managers and system managers for those fleets. Um, primary role is uh, maintaining fleet metrics, um, also heavily involved with uh, driver training and DM training on the um, financial aspects of the contractor fleet, going over settlements, um, looking at the revenue drivers, trying to plan revenue drivers for success, um, given the DM metrics to make sure that they're meeting the goals, either miles for the per mile contracts or revenue for the revenue guys okay now so if we have a lease purchase guy that's just come on let's say and he's running and he's just not having a whole lot of luck uh you know making things work as far as making money and stuff like sure. that um do you have a way for that driver to to go to anyone as far as seeking help as far as uh you know teaching them stuff or showing right. them what they're doing wrong so we do have some some tips for success um most of those are or um, based towards the um, fuel efficiency um, side of things. Uh, I think where we find a lot of new entrants into the contractor field, especially coming from a career in company uh, fleets or not having a previous experience in, in driving, don't realize how much that MPG cuts into or, or is a part of the profitability for um, a contractor, owner, operator. Um, so we do have tips on that. Um, if it's, you know, depending on the, the nature of the freight environment, um, cyclical as we all know. So yeah. we, we go through the ups and downs, um, do have to counsel some on, on load acceptance and uh, how that can affect profitability. Um, with our new revenue contractors, one big thing we're looking at is getting drivers who haven't had to experience the head haul back haul dynamic to understand that the rates are so good going into, let's say, an area like the Northeast um, because the rates are so good going out there that the rates coming back are going to be much less. Yeah. Um, and that's an industry standard. That's what every truck. truck that just all comes down to supply and demand, and demand mostly. Absolutely. There's so a lot if they're, more freight going into the East Coast yeah, than there is coming back do, out. Do the lease ops, um, I don't know if you'd be able to answer this, do they have the, the choice of picking loads or? So they ha do have the right of refusal. Um, is there any penalties for refusing? No. No. Okay. Um, what we do um, within our system is once the drivers refuse the load, we mark that as refused, and then we try not to give that load back to them. Um, if they're the only truck in the area and that's the only load that we can get for them, then obviously, I mean, it makes a little math is what it is. It's a one on one yeah. relationship there. So we either just, you know, we don't make that load and we don't have a load for that driver. But generally, there's. The, the penalty only comes, uh, you know, in the lack of movement. So okay. it, there's an opportunity cost to turning down freight. Um, so I'm not going to say that all loads are justified to a contractor, depending on their contract, deadhead, um, what have you. Sometimes there's going to be a load offered where we may need to wait for the next one. Mm -hmm. um, our contractors are planned within the Celadon freight system. So, yeah, we do have the ability to reach out to some of our broker contacts in the absence of freight, but our goal is to plan all of our contractors within our freight system. So that being said, we're not like a load board, um, yeah. like a Landstar type load board. We okay. are running Celadon freight, Celadon trailers on Celadon lease contractors. So um, in that aspect, you know, picking freight, I mean, we have access to see what's out there. We can kind of offer, but we don't do the, the multiple choice load board type situations okay. that some other companies do. So it's just a question of if driver gets a load that he just absolutely doesn't want, whether it be 
See, one of the things I'm hearing is some of the guys that are refusing are guys like if the revenue is too low on it. Correct. So, and, and there's there's a lot of education to that. Yeah. Um, like, like I was mentioning with the head hall back hall, um, I can tell you you're going to get a great rate going down to South Florida and it's not going to pay anything coming out. Yeah. Well, everyone knows coming out of Florida sucks. So. I mean, that's... Anyone that's been in this business more than two months should know that. <laughs> should, but sometimes, I mean, that's yeah. just not, you know, in a lot of... A lot of guys say, well, they look at the load boards and, oh, there's all this freight out there. And I, can, I tell any driver, I can move you. Whether you make a profit on it, yeah. that's a different story. <laughs> exactly. So, and that's, the, there's some learning curves to that. You know, we, we have do have a lot of new entrants into the contractor side of the business um, that we have to constantly, you know, open the books up a little bit to them. Okay. Um, now, show them, the, show them the freight rates. I have no problem. Yeah. sitting a guy what, down next what happens now if we have a driver let's say for instance uh, he's having issues where the, the revenue is low on almost every run that he's getting um to the point where he feels that he's running in the negative right um is there an outlet for him can he come and sit with you and go over what he's doing to sure. see maybe where he's going wrong or see where maybe the dms are not paying close enough attention to a absolutely uh, what I mean, they're we'll, giving him my door is always open I have no problem getting in the system there's no door <laughs> yeah, that's a slide for But um, showing them, I mean, I'll, I'll go right into the load the same as the DM would or I would to see what the revenue is. Yeah. It's, we're billing what? So it's all about communication, not yes. getting angry, just, you know, coming in and getting it fixed and settled. And and there's there's a cyclical nature, like I said, and it's, yeah. there, there are difficult times in this industry. When, when the going is good, it's great for everybody. When, yeah. it, when it gets lean, it's it can be tough, yeah. you know, and a, a, a driver coming in, and entering into a, a new aspect of the trucking industry or just first coming into the trucking industry as a contractor, wanting to make a certain amount of revenue per load at the slow time of the year presents its own challenges. Yeah. You know, so. um, I've always been of the philosophy that no one should get into any kind of a lease or even buying a truck unless they've had some experience. Now, I have my own theories on that. Do you have any advice to new guys coming in the industry? How long? Should they wait before getting into like a lease purchase? Should they be a company driver for X amount of time? If you are brand new to the industry, you know, I think it would behoove you to, to drive company to get used to life on the road um, initially. Um, you have to understand miles per gallon. You have to understand, you know, home time especially. Um, a contractor's life is not a company driver's life. You pay for that truck whether you're at home, you know, or you're yeah. out on the road. Insurance doesn't stop even though you're on vacation. So those those financial ramifications are huge. I think for a brand new driver, they, they become a little... Uh, overwhelmed? Overwhelming. Good word. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I certainly think we have the resources here to make anybody successful. Um, but you know there there is an experience barrier that the drivers probably should overcome before they get, get into. Okay, uh, guys. So you side. you've heard it from someone else now. You've heard me say it many times. Don't jump into it until you know a little bit about the business. So now it's not just me saying it. You've heard someone who's got the experience in on the other side of the the counter that's telling you the same thing. So, anyways, just to wrap it up here, um, is there anything you'd like to say to the drivers? Um, you know, um, I guess. Happy Driver Appreciation Week. Uh, you know, we here at Celadon do appreciate all our drivers do for us, contractor or company. Um, we try really hard here in the office to to uh, see your side of things. I know that there there can always be a, a little contention, especially with phone or Qualcomm. That yeah. you know the communication isn't always perfect, but um, you know, no, we do care, and we are here trying to do our best to make you profitable. All right then. Well, thanks very much for your time. All right. Thank you.